then the study table becomes an altar. The kitchen counter becomes another. The patient's bed for the care provider. And the work table for the worker. Let's choose to follow God's own heart. To give the world a new, fresh start. Carlo is different to my picture of a saint as he is a really relatable person and was also a teenager like me and he lived in my own day and age. Carlo inspires me because he led a normal teenage life but did amazing work combining his interest in computers with spreading his love for the Eucharist, especially Eucharistic miracles. Shalom World presents an opportunity for a new beginning, a new lifestyle, an entirely new channel exclusively for prayer. SW Prayer. Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Experience 42 live celebrations of Holy Mass, the source and summit of our lives every week. Be in the Lord's holy presence. 42 Eucharistic adorations live every week. Meditate on the Messianic mysteries daily. 28 rosary prayers live every week. Implore God's mercy for the church and for the whole world. 14 chaplets of divine mercy every week. All brought to you from countries around the world. The Word, Psalter, Divine Office, Lectio Divina, Thought for the Day, Saints, Devotions, and much more to draw our lives closer to the heart of God. A new channel. SW Prayer, a Catholic companion to eternity. During these modern times, technology is often used for gaming and unnecessary things. But Carla used technology to help document and promote Eucharistic miracles and to inform us more about God's great love for us. He used technology in a good way, which makes him more saintly and holy. Laudator Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ, and a very warm welcome to all of you joining us for this live broadcast on the occasion of the beatification of Carlo Acutis. We're coming to you live from the Upper Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi, and this Holy Mass will be presided over by Cardinal Agostino Valini, who is the papal legate for the Basilicas of St. Francis and St. Mary of the Angels in Assisi, and he's also 
Pope Francis' personal representative for this beatification ceremony. I'd like to welcome all of you who are joining us today. Whatever time of the day you're joining us from whatever part of the world you're joining us. Some of you joining through the Vatican Media channels, a warm welcome to all of you. Some joining through the Vatican News web portal, our Vatican News live events app, or the Radio Vaticana app, or our Vatican News English YouTube channel or Facebook live feed. To those of you joining us through television, you have the privilege also of seeing these images coming to you live from Assisi. These are people sitting outside the Basilica as strict COVID protocol is in place. To those tuning in through Catholic TV, Shalom World TV, EWTN, Salt and Light TV, Netmadarshan TV, and Catholic Network. And still others tuning in through radio. To those joining us through Luminous Radio, welcome to you all and to all other radio listeners from other local radio stations picking up this broadcast. And to those of you joining us through various digital platforms. My name is Sister Bernadette, and it is truly my pleasure to be able to provide you with the English texts and translations of this beatification ceremony. We'll be hearing a lot about Carlo Acutis. He did not grow up in Assisi, but in Milan, but loved to go on vacation here in Assisi and incarnated, we might say, in his own way, the Franciscan spirituality, and it was his desire that he be buried here. And so initially he was buried in Milan, but at a certain point his remains were brought here to Assisi, not in this church, but in the church of St. Mary Major, where his remains lie in the Shrine of the Renunciation. It's the chapel that recalls when St. Francis of Assisi renounced his entire inheritance and also stripped himself of his rich clothing and left his clothing in the hands of the bewildered bishop. Carlo Acutis, also from a well-off family who lived as if he was not wealthy and spent a lot of his allowance on the poor. In fact, when he, when his funeral took place, there were many, many people that his parents did not know who attended the funeral, people that he spent time with on the streets, many of the migrant workers whom he had not only helped, even materially, but by giving them a listening ear. We see the procession now forming outside of the basilica. We now take a moment to dispose ourselves and to enter into this most beautiful ceremony in which we will begin to understand this new blessed who is probably the first who as his legacy has left a website. Yes, you heard me correctly, a website. And we'll be talking more about that later. These beautiful images of the sky here. It is about 4.30 local time here in Rome. Many bishops forming this procession, a wonderful day in which Italy once again has the privilege of acknowledging one of its sons as having reached the heights of holiness.
Carlo died at the age of 15 of acute leukemia. Here we see a beautiful image of him, an ordinary Italian young man, curly hair. The procession has now entered the church, the basilica. As you hear, we are having some audio problems. opening hymn, recalling that we are a royal people, a holy nation, a priestly people, the people of God, giving praise to the Lord. For those of you who may be following in a missal, most of the prayers and readings come from tomorrow's Sunday Mass. Here, Cardinal Vellini now venerating the altar on which is placed the Book of the Gospels. Cardinal Bellini now incensing the altar, the crucifix here, helping us enter into a moment in which heaven and earth, all of creation, all of time are present. We will also be seeing Carlo's mother and father, Andrea and Antonia, here in the front row, 
as well as their twin children who were born four years after their son died. And we begin Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Fratelli e sorelle carissimi, ci sentiamo avvolti in questo giorno di festa. Dear brothers and sisters, on this festive day we feel wrapped in God's mercy, who unites all of us with His Holy Spirit and makes of us a royal priest, a holy nation a people whom he has made his own, so that we might sing his marvelous works that he has accomplished for us. Also in Carlo Acutis, whom today we proclaim blessed, we admire and recognize the work of the Holy Spirit who made him an authentic witness of the charity of Christ by nourishing himself on Christ every day in the Holy Eucharist. Let us dispose ourselves to listen to God's word and to participate in this sacrifice of praise, imploring his pardon sins. Confesso a Dio Onnipotente e a voi fratelli che ho molto peccato in pensieri, parole, opere, omissioni. Per mia colpa, mia co grandissima colpa, e supplico la Beata Sempre Vergine Maria, gli angeli, i santi e voi fratelli di pregare per me, il Signore Dio nostro. Dio Onnipotente abbia misericordia di noi, perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna.
And now we will have the rite of beatification. The presider, Cardinal Agostino Valini, has taken his seat. Padre Cardinale Agostino, la chiesa di Assisi non c'era un Reverend Father Valini, the Church of Assini non c'era un braguardo tadino humbly requests of the Supreme Pontiff Francis that the Venerable Servant of God, Carlo Acutis, be numbered among the blessed. The Venerable Servant of God, Carlo Acutis, was born in London on May 3rd, 1991, of Italian parents, Andrea, Cutis and Antonia Salzana, who were in the city because of work. He was baptized on May 18th in the Church of Our Lady of Sorrows in, or Our Lady of Dolors in London in September 19. In 1998, he received his first communion ahead of the usual age. On 24th of May 2003, he received the Sacrament of Confirmation in the Church of Santa Maria Sagreta in Milan. At the age of 14, he began high school at the Leo XIII Institute in Milan. Along with a computer science student, he began to take care of the website of Santa Maria in Milan. And he continued that work with the Leo XIII Institute with the volunteers. He loved to spend his vacations in Assisi in a family home where he began to get to know St. Francis. He learned to love Jesus, respect for creation, and dedication to the poor. Thanks to the example, he began to do many acts of charity to the homeless and he would help them with the money that he saved from his weekly allowance. One of his sayings was, the Eucharist is my highway to heaven. In fact, the Eucharist is the synthesis of his spirituality and the center of his entire existence spent in friendship with God. Another great pillar of his spirituality was the Virgin Mary, to whom he um, promised himself, um, consecrated himself several times. In 2016, he fell ill with leukemia, and a few days after, he offered his sufferings for the Pope, for the Church, and in order to go straight to heaven. And after his death, his uh, fame of sanctity grew in the entire world, and he had expressed the wish that he remain in Assisi even after his death. Our Holy Father, uh, declared him venerable in July. His mortal remains were transferred in April of 2019 to the Shrine of the Renunciation in St. Mary, Mary Major, and his death occurred between the night of October 11th and 12th in 2006. Santita. Cardinal Valini now speaking. On behalf of His Holiness Pope Francis, I give the apostolic letter by which the Supreme Pontiff has inscribed among the number of the blessed the venerable servant of God, Carlo Acutis. Everyone has now risen to their feet for the reading of this Apostolic Letter. And Cardinal Bellini now also with staff in hand. In Italian. Lettera Apostolica di Papa Francesco. 
apostolic letter of Pope Francis, we, welcoming the desire of our brother Domenico Sorrentino, Archbishop of Assisi Nocera, Umbra Gualdo Tadino, of many other brothers in the Episcopate and many lay faithful, after hearing the opinion of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints, by our apostolic authority, we declare that the Venerable Servant of God, Carlo Acutis, layperson, who, with the enthusiasm of youth, cultivated a friendship with the Lord Jesus, putting the Eucharist and the witness of charity at the center of his life, henceforth shall be called blessed, and that his feast shall be celebrated every year in the places and according to the norms established by law on the 12th of October, on the day of his birth into heaven, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Given in Rome, in the Lateran, the 10th September, in the year of our Lord, 2020, the 8th of our pontificate. And the apostolic letter is now being shown to everyone. And now the image of Cardinal of Carlo Acutis being unveiled before our eyes. As the choir sings. Amen, so be it. singing, the Church of Christ festively greets her young son, O Carlo, blessed. He sought the heart of Christ with zeal in the heart of the Church. O blessed Carlo. As this song being performed, the relic being brought up in the company of his parents. It's the intact relic of his heart. We hear someone commenting in the background, look at his mother. What mixed emotions she must have. blessing the crowd with his parents standing right in front of him with the relic. And now the parents coming up in order to greet Cardinal Valini.
Carlo's own mother, one of the many, many people that he brought to the faith. His mother had stopped practicing, and it was through her son and his desire to understand the faith better that she herself came back to the faith. For the first time, the relics of this newly proclaimed blessed being incensed. We see the reliquary here. The Eucharist is my apostolate, if I'm not mistaken, is what it says. The church that is in Assisi no c'era umbra gualdo tadino devotedly is devotedly thankful and grateful to the successor of the Apostle Peter, Pope Francis, and gives thanks to the Father of Jesus Christ and our Father, to God three times holy, and lifts up its hymn of praise for having proclaimed blessed the venerable servant of God, Carlo Acutis. And now the Gloria. Here we see Carlos's mother, Alessandra, Antonia, excuse me. query says the Eucharist my highway
preghiamo. Ci preceda e ci accompagni sempre la Tua grazia, o oh Signore. May your grace, O oh Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Amen. Our first reading, responsorial psalm and second reading from tomorrow's liturgy, the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food, filled with marrow of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. I will live in your house, O Lord, all the days of my life. is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me.
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Second reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. La lettera di San Paolo Apostolo ai Filippesi. Fratelli, so vivere nella povertà come so vivere nell'abbondanza. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress, and my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To God, our Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we might know what is the hope to which he has called us.
Il Signore sia con voi. Dal Vangelo secondo Giovanni. As we've heard, our Gospel is from the Gospel of John. chosen specifically in honor of the new blessed. In quel tempo Gesù disse, Io sono la vera vite, e il Padre Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch, and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is what I ask you, that you love one another. The Book of the Gospels now being presented to Cardinal Valini, and we now bless ourselves as we are being blessed with Christ's very present, very presence, present here in the Word.
<coughs> and now for the homily. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. With these words that we heard from the Gospel of John, Jesus, during the Last Supper, turns to his disciples and exhorts them to remain united to him as branches to the vine. The image of the vine and the branches is very eloquent in order to express how necessary it is that the Christian live in communion with God. The Christian's strength is specifically found there to have a personal relationship with Jesus, intimate, deep, and to make the Eucharist the high point of his or her relationship with God. Dear brothers and sisters, today we are particularly admiring and are attracted to the life and witness of Carlo Acutis, whom the Church acknowledges as a model and example of Christian life, proposing it to the young above all. It comes spontaneously to ask ourselves, what was special about this young boy, barely 15 years of age? Going through his biography, we find a few firm points that characterize him even from the human point of view. He was a normal boy. He was simple, spontaneous, friendly. Just look at his photo. He loved nature and animals. He played football or soccer. He had many friends among his peers. He was attracted to the modern means of social communication. He was passionate about IT. He was a self-learner and created programs, as Pope Francis said, to spread the gospel to communicate values and beauty. He had the gift of attracting others, and others saw him as an example. Even as a child, as members of his family testify, he sensed the need for faith and turned his gaze toward Jesus. His love for the Eucharist, founded and kept his relationship with God alive. Carlo used to say often, the Eucharist is my highway to heaven. He used to participate in Holy Mass every day and would remain for long periods of time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. Carlo used to say, those who draw near to the Eucharist every day will go straight to heaven. Jesus was his friend, teacher, and savior. He was the strength of his life and the reason for everything he did. He was convinced that to love others and to do good and to do them good, he needed to draw energy from the Lord. In this spirit, he was very devoted to the, Mado to the Madonna. In addition, his ardent desire was to attract as many people as possible to Jesus, making himself a proclaimer of the gospel above all through the example of his life. 
It was precisely the witness of his faith that spurred him to successfully undertake a work of assiduous evangelization within the worlds he entered in and out of, touching the hearts of the people he would meet and enkindling in them the desire to change their lives and to draw nearer to God. And he did so with spontaneity. Showing the love and goodness of the Lord through what he did and how he behaved. In fact, his ability to witness to the values that he believed in was extraordinary, even to the point of facing misunderstanding, obstacles, and sometimes even being laughed at. Carlo sentiva forte. Carlo strongly felt the need to help people discover that God is near us and that it is beautiful to be with him, to enjoy his friendship and his grace. He used every means to communicate this spiritual need, even the most modern means of social communication, which he knew how to use well, in particular the Internet, that he considered a gift of God and an important tool to encounter people and to spread Christian values. His way of thinking would make him say that the Internet was not only a means of evasion, but a space of dialogue of getting to know others, of sharing, of mutual respect, to be used responsibly without becoming slaves to it and rejecting online bullying. In the vast virtual world, one needs to know how to distinguish good from evil. In this positive perspective, he would encourage the use of the mass media as a means at the service of the gospel to reach as many people as possible so they could know how beautiful friendship with the Lord is. To that end, he dedicated himself to organizing an exhibit of the principal Eucharistic miracles that have happened in the world, which he also used when teaching catechism to children. He was very devoted to Our Lady, reciting the Rosary daily. He consecrated himself several times to Mary, renewing his affection for her and to implore her protection. Prayer and mission, therefore, these are the two distinctive traits of Blessed Carlo Acutis's heroic faith, which in the course of his brief life brought him to entrust himself to the Lord in every circumstance, especially in the most difficult moments. It was in this spirit that he lived and faced with serenity the illness that would lead to his death. Carlo abandoned himself into the arms of Providence and under the maternal gaze of Mary would repeat, I want to offer all my sufferings to the Lord, for the Pope and for the Church. I don't want to go to purgatory. I want to go straight to paradise. Let's remind ourselves that it was a 15-year-old boy who spoke like this, revealing a surprising Christian maturity that motivates and encourages us to take the life of faith seriously. Carlo elicited such admiration because of the ardor with which he would defend the sanctity of the family in his conversations and the sacredness of life against abortion and euthanasia. 
the new blessed, also represents a model of fortitude, alien to any form of compromise, aware that in order to remain in Jesus' love, it was necessary to concretely live the gospel, even at the cost of going against the tide. He truly put into practice the words of Jesus, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This certainty of life is what led him toward the exercise of charity toward his neighbor, above all toward the poor, the lonely and abandoned elderly, the homeless, persons with disabilities, and those whom society marginalized and kept out of sight. Carlo was always welcoming toward all those in need. And when, going to and from school, he would meet them on the street, he would stop and speak with them, listen to their problems, and within his possibilities, he would help them. Carlo was never concentrated on himself, but was able to understand the need and demands of others in whom he saw Christ's face. In this sense, for example, he never missed out on helping his schoolmates, in particular, those who were experiencing the most, the hardest difficulties. What an enlightening life, therefore, completely given to others, as is the Eucharistic bread. Dear brothers and sisters, the Church rejoices today because in this young blessed, the words of the Lord are fulfilled. I have chosen you, and I have appointed you to go and bear fruit. And Carlo went and bore the fruit of holiness, demonstrating that it is a goal everyone can attain, rather than as something abstract and reserved to a few. His life is a model, particularly for the young, not to seek gratifications solely in passing successes, but in those eternal values that Jesus proposes in the Gospel, namely, to put God first, both in life's great and small situations, to serve one's brothers and sisters, especially the least. The beatification of Carlo Acutis, the son of Lombardy, who was enchanted with the land of St. Francis of Assisi, is good news, a powerful proclamation that a boy of our time, one among many, was conquered by Christ and became a beacon of light for all who want to know him and follow his example. He witnessed that faith does not distance us from life, but rather more deeply immerses us in it, thus indicating the concrete path for living the gospel joyfully. It's up to us to follow that path, attracted by the fascinating experience of Blessed Carlo, so that our lives might also shine with light and hope. Blessed Carlo Acutis, pray for us. Cardinal Vellini now finished his homily. I believe we're now seeing Carlos's father here. And we also saw a changing of the guard here, the state also being officially 
represented through many mayors. Fratelli e sorelle carissimi, in comunione con tutta la Chiesa, professiamo la nostra fede. And we will now profess fede. our faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Fratelli e sorelle carissimi, Dear brothers and sisters, through the faith and our baptism, we have become living temples of the Lord and his priestly people. Let us turn to God and pray for the growth of the church and for the salvation of all men and women. Per il Santo Padre Francesco, chiamato ad essere Holy Father Pope Francis, called to be a sign of communion in the Church that enlightened by the Spirit, he might guide the people of God in their adhesion to Christ the Lord. that the Church might be a joyful witness of the joy of living for Christ and that she might never cease to proclaim the gospel of love courageously to all men and women. Per il nostro Vescovo Domenico, for our Bishop Domenico and the Presbyterate, for Cardinal Agostino, the Holy Father's representative, and those bishops here present, that they might encourage the flock entrusted to them in love of God above all things and to serve their brothers and sisters in Christ's charity. For those throughout the world who are devoted to and are friends of Blessed Carlo Acutis, that through his example, putting love for God above all things, they might experience the beauty of life, even through the use of the most advanced means of social communication for young people, that through the intercession of Blessed Carlo Acutis, they might know how to live as originals and not as photocopies, and that they might have the courage to make choices, committing them to the service of the Church and society. O Dio, che nella vita del Beato Carlo 
who showed in the life of Blessed Carlo the unfathomable riches of the Eucharist and raised him up as an example for the young and a witness of mercy toward the poor. Grant also to us, through his intercession, to live always united to you and that we might recognize you in the brothers and sisters we meet in our walk of life. We now move into the Liturgy of the Eucharist during this beatification ceremony taking place in the Upper Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi. It seems we may have lost the audio momentarily. That should be picking up once again. Again, Carlo Acutis was born in 1991 and lived a very brief life, dying in 2006. He was barely 15 years old. He would be 29 if he were still alive. He had no brothers or sisters while he was living. But shortly after he died, he appeared in a dream to his mother and told her that she would have two other children. And in 2010, just four years after he died, Carlos's mother was blessed with fraternal twins whom we've been seeing in the front row here along with their parents, Andrea and Antonia. They live in Milan where Carlos grew up. We heard quite a bit about Carlos during Cardinal Vellini's homily. His mother began going to theology classes in order to respond to her son's questions, and at the invitation of their parish priest, she began to teach catechism, and she brought her son along, and when the priest found out how about this own young child's belief, he allowed Carlos to receive First Communion before the normal age here in Italy. It was especially of the Eucharist, which we are about to enter into ourselves here, that Carlos created a website which is still available, and all of us can find on the internet about Eucharistic miracles that have taken place throughout the world. So he is perhaps the first blessed and we hope saint who has left as a legacy a website. He was very computer savvy, taking in the footsteps of one of his uncles. His connection with Assisi is that he loved to come here on vacation. His family was very well off. He could have gone anywhere in the world, and yet he used to come here to Assisi. And it was here that he became immersed in the Franciscan spirituality, which led him to meet the poor who, as we know, he was actually serving Christ the poor that he would come into contact with, the, the porters and the rich corridor that he lived in who were often migrants. He knew most of them. Many of them attended his funeral. Carlos's cause was opened in 2013, just seven years after his death. In that same year, a miracle took place in Brazil. A, a pastor of a parish had come to know Carlos and presented a, an image of him in their church and allowed the parishioners to get to know the saint and also to pray to him. And during a, a 
period, extended period of a few days, a young boy there was miraculously cured of a congenital pancreatic disease. That miracle was then accepted earlier this year in February and paved the way, therefore, for his beatification. He was proclaimed venerable in 2018, so his cause has gone ahead quite quickly. The Eucharistic prayer today, for those of you following in a missal, is Eucharistic prayer three. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful and the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Il Signore sia con voi. In alto i nostri cuori. Diamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. È veramente giusto benedirti e ringraziarti. It is truly right and just to bless and thank you, Lord, Holy Father, source of truth and life. For on this festive day, you have called us to your house. Today, your family, united in listening to the word and in communion, by the one bread that is broken, remembers the risen Lord, and wait, while waiting for that eternal day, when all of humanity will enter into your rest. Then we shall see your face and praise your mercy without end. With this joyful hope, United with the angels and saints, we sing with one voice the hymn of your glory. Padre veramente santo, a te la lode da ogni creatura. Per mezzo di Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio e nostro Signore, nella potenza dello Spirito Santo, fai vivere e santifichi l'universo e continui a radunare intorno a te un popolo che da un confine all'altro della terra offra al tuo nome il sacrificio perfetto. Ora ti preghiamo umilmente, Manda il tuo Spirito a santificare i doni che ti offriamo perché diventino il corpo e il sangue di Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio e nostro Signore, che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Nella notte in cui fu tradito, Egli prese il pane, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, 
lo spezzò, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse «Prendete e mangiatene tutti, questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi». We adore Jesus, present now in this sacred host, whom Carlo Acutis called the highway to heaven. Dopo la cena, allo stesso modo, prese il calice, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, prendete, bevetene tutti, questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. We adore you, Jesus, our Lord and our God, present in this precious blood. Mistero della fede Celebrando il memoriale del tuo Figlio, morto per la nostra salvezza, gloriosamente risorto e asceso al cielo, nell'attesa della sua venuta, ti offriamo, Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nell'offerta della tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione e a noi che ci nutriamo del corpo e sangue del tuo Figlio dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo perché diventiamo in Cristo un solo corpo ed un solo Spirito. Egli faccia di noi un sacrificio perenne a te gradito perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso insieme con i tuoi eletti, con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, con San Giuseppe, suo Sposo, con i tuoi Santi Apostoli, i gloriosi martiri, il Beato Carlo e tutti i Santi, nostri intercessori presso di te. Per questo sacrificio di riconciliazione dona Padre pace e salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua Chiesa pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo e il nostro Papa Francesco, il nostro Vescovo Domenico, il Cardinale Agostino che presiede questa liturgia, il Collegio Episcopale, tutto il clero e il popolo che tu hai redento. Ascolta la preghiera di questa famiglia che hai convocato alla tua presenza nel giorno in cui il Cristo ha vinto la morte e ci ha resi partecipi della sua risurrezione. Ricongiungi a te, Padre misericordioso, tutti i tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli defunti e tutti i giusti che in pace con te hanno lasciato questo mondo. Concedi anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme a godere per sempre della Tua gloria in Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale Tu, o oh Dio, doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo. 
A te Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Prima di partecipare al banchetto dell'Eucaristia, segno di riconciliazione e vincolo di unione now being invited to pray the Our Father. insieme come il Signore ci ha insegnato. Liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento, nell'attesa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace. Non guardare ai nostri peccati, ma alla fede della tua Chiesa e donale unità e pace secondo la tua volontà, tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. Now we move into the communion rite with the singing of the Agnus Dei, Lamb of God.
Beati gli invitati alla cena del Signore. Ecco l'agnello di Dio che toglie i peccati del mondo. And we pray, O oh Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. And now directions are being given for receiving Holy Communion. Sarete raggiunti dai ministri. Toglierete la mascherina soltanto nel momento in cui ricevete la comunione. desiderano fare la comunione possono rimanere in piedi. Many people got to know Carlo Acutis through the apostolic exhortation that Pope Francis wrote after the Synod on Young People called Christus Vivit. And our Holy Father wrote in that document, don't forget that there are young people who show creativity and even genius. And this was the case with the then venerable Carlo Acutis. Pope Francis wrote, Carlo was well aware that the whole apparatus of communications, advertising and social networking can be used to lull us, to make us addicted to consumerism and buying the latest thing on the market, obsessed with our free time, caught up in negativity. Yet he knew how to use the new communications technology to transmit the gospel, to communicate values and beauty. Pope Francis continued, Carlo did not fall into that trap. He saw that many young people wanting to be different really end up being like everyone else, running after whatever the powerful set before them with the mechanisms of consumerism and distraction. In this way, they do not bring forth the gifts the Lord has given them. They do not offer the world those unique personal talents that God has given to each of them. As a result, Carlo used to say, everyone is born as an original, but many people end up dying as photocopies. Don't let that happen to you, Pope Francis said. The relic before us of Carlo Acutis, it's the, his heart, which was found intact with the writing on the reliquary, the Eucharist, my highway to heaven. The presence of Carlos relic here, a reminder that right here, right now, in Jesus whom we receive in the Blessed Sacrament, whom his parents and his brother and sister who never knew him, they are receiving their brother and their son as well. from Blessed Carlo Acutis. To always be close to Jesus, that is my life plan.
do not be afraid, because with the incarnation of Jesus, death becomes life, and there's no need to escape. In eternal life, something extraordinary awaits us. Standing before the Eucharistic Christ, we become holy. Our goal must be the infinite, not the finite. The infinite is our homeland. Heaven has been waiting for us forever. Jerusalem is right on our doorstep. The more Eucharist we receive, the more we will become like Jesus, so that on earth we will have a foretaste of heaven. Not me, but God. Continually ask your guardian angel for help. Your guardian angel has to become your best friend. Our soul is like a hot air balloon. If by chance there is a mortal sin, the soul falls to the ground. Confession is like the fire underneath the balloon, enabling the soul to rise again. It is important to go to confession often. Sadness is looking at ourselves. Happiness is looking towards God. The only thing we have to ask God for in prayer is the desire to be holy. The Virgin Mary is the only woman in my life. I am happy to die because I have lived my life without wasting a minute on those things which do not please God. His mother recounts that in the summer of 2006, just before he died, Carlo asked his mother, do you think I should become a priest? And his mother answered that you will see it for yourself. God will reveal it to you. And after he died, his mother said, he's being a priest from heaven. Another thing Carlo often repeated was, each person reflects the light of God. A servant who took care of the home 
in which Carlo lived also testified that Carlo used to get up early in order to tidy up his own room and make his own bed. This servant, his name Raich, a Hindu, after seeing the example of this young and handsome rich man, as he called him, who wanted to live a simple life, he said, Carlos captivated me with his deep faith, his charity, and his purity. And because of Carlos' example, he decided to be baptized in the Catholic Church, one of many, many thousands who came to faith through Carlo. Preghiamo. And we pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment that comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature. And now the Bishop of Assisi, Nocera Umbra Gualdo Tadino, Bishop Domenico Sorrentino will speak a few words of thanksgiving. L'anima mia magnifica il Signore. My soul magnifies the Lord. There are no other words than Mary's to adequately express the joy of our souls. Today, heaven has drawn near that Eucharistic highway that Carlo loved to travel at high speed to reach heaven. He, today, traveled in the opposite direction to return to us with a radiant and blessed face. Thanks to the Lord, who did such great things in his short but intense life. Thanks to Pope Francis, who granted this gift to the Church, recognizing in Carlo a model of holiness, especially to the young people. Thanks to Cardinal Agostino, who represented Pope Francis. Thanks to Carlo's parents, Andrea and Antonia, who welcomed this gift from on high into their lives, which is a child to all parents, and who respected and supported his path to holiness. Thanks to the Church of Milan, who accompanied him in his human and spiritual growth, introducing the cause that today has brought him to the honors of the altar. Thanks to the postulator and to the Friends of Carlo Acudis Association, who prepared this radiant day, and to those who took care of lovingly planning this ceremony. Thanks to the members of the church in Assisi and especially to the young people. Thanks to the Franciscan community of Sacro Convento and the various Christian communities in Assisi for the generous availability they've shown. Thanks to the public administration, the region and province, to the civil authorities, to the law enforcement and volunteers for their active collaboration. Thanks to the, my collaborators in the diocesan curia, Thanks to the entire Christian community in Assisi to which Carlo came and breathed the freshness of the Franciscan spirituality, following in a certain way in his footsteps and then finding rest for his mortal remains in the shrine of the Renunciation. And that shrine 
by the special divine of by the special design of providence francis and carlo are now inseparable beyond the distance of time and the difference between these two a few golden threads unite them carlo's program of life to be always united to jesus his love for the eucharist his devotion to the holy virgin his friendship with the poor show his closeness to the poverello's spirituality both invite us to live according to the gospel today the church of assisi nocero gualdo exalts in symphony with the church of milan and with the many pilgrims who have come from all over despite the limitations of the pandemic through the intercession of carlo we want to implore the world that the time of this severe trial for everyone might be reduced especially bitter for those for whom it is more burdensome for those who due to their poverty are at greater risk looking specifically at them almost as a, as a seal of gratitude for today's event, the Church of Assisi, through the Shrine of the Renunciation, is promoting today two charitable initiatives. A, um, they're providing a food to the hungry near the shrine and one that looks a little bit uh, further in the future that aims to be a stimulus for the renewal of the economy. And it's called the Francis of Assisi and Carlo Acutis International Prize for a Fraternal Economy which begins today. It's a small response to the encyclical Fratelli Tutti that exactly a week ago Pope Francis signed in this grace-filled place. May Jesus, through the intercession of Carlo, help us all to take more seriously our faith, especially young people, that they might discover the path of true life, living the joys of this earth without, without taking their eyes off of heaven, which is our true homeland. Long live Jesus, long live Mary, long live Carlo through Jesus and Mary. These words of thanksgiving spoken by the bishop of these dioceses that have been united. Assisi nocera umbra gualdo tadino. And now Cardinal Bellini and Bishop Sorrentino embracing each other. Il Signore sia con voi. And now the final blessing. Sia benedetto il nome del Signore. Il nostro aiuto è nel nome del Signore. Vi benedica Dio Onnipotente, Padre e Figlio e Spirito Santo. Glorificate il Signore con la santità della vostra vita. Andate in pace. The Mass concluding now with a song inspired by Carlo Acutis called Not Me But God. Here again we see Carlos' family, his mother and father, and his uh, young brother and sister whom he never met. 
These last images coming to us from the Upper Church, Upper Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi with this beautiful image of, of Carlo, who died at the age of 15. You can find many other photos of him on the internet, including one taken recently when his body was displayed in the Shrine of the Renunciation that we've been hearing of in the parish of St. Mary Major in Assisi. We now bear with us the example and the witness of this young Apostle of the Eucharist whose website can be reached. I'd love to give you the title, but it is in Italian. But you can search for it online. An internet site where you can find information about the various Eucharistic miracles that have taken place throughout the world. Beautiful example not only of a life lived, nourished on the Blessed Sacrament, but a life given, poured out as our Lord poured himself out, given to the poor that he would meet. At one point, he met someone, a homeless person who was sick along the road and begged his mom that together they brought him to a hospital. And when he was released from the hospital, they also brought him back to their own home where he stayed as a guest for a few days. It's not often that someone is brought to the honors of the altar and their whole family is still alive in this case. As with John Amola, the family participating in the beatification of their son and brother, it must be a moment of tremendous emotion for them, both one of tremendous loss, but at the same time, one of tremendous joy. This now brings to an end this live broadcast of the beatification of Carlo Acutis from the Upper Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi. I invite you to go to the Vatican News web portal. You will find biographical information about Carlos, and you'll also find the link to the website that he created. We'll be back tomorrow at noon, local Rome time, for the Pope's Angelus message and the recitation of that Marian prayer. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to thank all of the technicians who've made this broadcast possible and all of you for joining us. Let's make the Eucharist our highway to heaven. Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. different to my picture of a saint as he is a really relatable person and was also a teenager like me and he lived in my own day and age. Carlo inspires me because he led a normal teenage life but did amazing work combining his interest in computers with spreading his love for the Eucharist, especially Eucharistic miracles. Are you looking for life-changing entertainment? Does what you see on most channels leave you feeling unfulfilled? Well, look no further. Shalom World TV brings the peace and joy of Jesus Christ to you, whether at home or on the go. To start watching, you don't need antennas, cable connections, or a dish. You probably already have what you need, if you have a smart TV, such as a Samsung, LG, or Panasonic, or if you have them with an Android, Opera, or Roku TV operating system. These can be found on the latest models of Sony, Toshiba, Vizio, Philips, RCA, Sharp Aquos, 
TCL, Insignia, Element, Itachi, Vestal, Skyworth, Chang Hong, Konka, and Hisense. You can also watch Shalom TV on most IPTV streaming devices, starting with the fourth generation of Apple TV and Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Mi Box, Amino, Humax, or on TiVo Box through the Opera TV store. Are you a gamer or virtual reality enthusiast? We've got you covered. Shalom World is on Xbox One, Razer Forge, Nvidia Shield, and HoloLens. To start watching, all you have to do is go to the App Store, download Shalom World, and start being fulfilled by content that brings you into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. For more information on how to watch Shalom World on your TVs and devices, visit us at shalomworld.org slash connected TV. Have a smartphone or tablet? Take Shalom with you wherever you go. Again, by downloading Shalom World from the App Store. If you prefer to watch from your Mac or PC, get the Shalom World desktop app. Or you can always watch from our website, shalomworld.org. And guess what? Shalom World is absolutely free on all of these platforms. Yes, free. There are no download charges and no in-store app purchases required, ever. If you're looking for life-changing entertainment, you found it. It's here, waiting for you on your Shalom World. Seek the Lord in His body, blood, soul, and divinity. Allow Jesus to stir a longing for Him in your soul. Shalom World TV brings a sacred time of Eucharistic adoration to the world.